Good evening. Good evening. To start, I'd like to ask each and every one of you to close your eyes and try and listen and more importantly feel what I'm about to say to you. It is going to remind you of something and that you picture yourself in whatever situation it will remind you. Mother's heartbeat is one of the first things we hear in life. It's something we hear and encounter when we're in the womb. But however, even today, at this day and age, we are all able to derive an emotional response from it. We are, we are able to derive something abstract as an emotional response and, and feeling and happiness and comfort from something so concrete that deals with time. So, um, Something, now, I would like to talk to you about how rhythm links with emotion and how time works in music to create kind of these effects and reactions in the audience. And to do that, I'm going to use my trusty friend's tabla, which I learned as a tool of Hindustani classical music over the past few years. So, a story that I'd like to tell you is a story of the first time I learned to clap. At first glance, it doesn't seem like much, but for a three-year-old, it was really, it was revolutionary, because it's the first time I was able to express myself using rhythm. It's a, it's a tool by just putting my hands together multiple times. I can actually express emotion and convey happiness and pride. So, as I grew up, I began to learn music and I began to pick up the tabla. So, I began to again start with the basic rhythms. So, I'll play you something basic that I first learned, which is known as theme. It is quite simple and quite rudimentary and quite similar to everything else we hear in Western music nowadays. But nonetheless, it's still important. It's a, it was a stepping stone in my journey to be able to express emotion through this instrument. So next, what I'd like you to do is I'd like to request each and uh, all of you to close your eyes again. But this time, I would like you all to help me out. I would like you to just use your fingers and snap whenever you could. So let's start now. So just close your, just close your eyes and just snap whenever you want. So this, this is what I, this is how I like to simulate rainfall. Now rainfall is something that I was introduced, like something that I was able to feel at a really young age, and I think it gives all of us a sense of comfort and a sense of happiness, and it reminds us possibly of many positive memories. It's a and it's a really pleasant, comforting sound. But what I like to point out is that it's, it's a very simple rhythm, but we can actually it, it can tell us so much, and it can remind us of so so many things. So something else I began to think about in my musical journey was the effect of speed and tempo and how it affected the listeners. So in Hindustani music, tempo plays a very special role. Pieces played with a slow tempo usually symbolize purity and may usually be played at religious gatherings. So what I'll play for you now is known as a pace card. It's an introductory piece played at the beginning of a solo where the soloist is able to uh, express what he wants and improvise uh, without the shackles of a theme of his performance.
So next, I'd like to talk to you about the effect a slow piece can have versus a faster one. So the example I will use to illustrate this is known as the bhajan ta. It goes like this. So next, I would like you to listen as I play this at a slow tempo and picture a religious scenery with uh, any with a god that you worship or any religious scenery or something um, a vocalist that singing and performing to serenade a wedding, for example. So this, it has a very low energy feel, but it's also a very calming and soothing beat. Next, when I play quicker, you, you, you might notice that there's a lot of more energy and it can bring a lot of more tension. So this could perhaps be used for a battle scene between two great warriors. Next, as, my, as I continued on my musical journey, I was really interested with complex rhythms, ones that you don't necessarily hear in, in Western music, which usually use four beat or three beat cycles. So I was all exposed to rhythm cycles with five or even seven beats. And what really stood out to me is that, for example, with the seven beat ta, with the seven beat cycle, it's you get a feeling that something is missing. Like the second you count to seven, you you feel like you want to count to eight, but then it becomes back right to one. So it it creates a really new emotion that really intrigued me. And with something that is five or ten, you can't you end up feeling that there's something extra at the end, that there's something. So you want it to start again earlier, but it doesn't. And that um, creates something, a really interesting feeling. So to start, I'll play you a seven beat cycle known as Tal Rupak. And I'd like you to try to notice the extra beat or the extra couple beats that I will play in the 10 beat cycle, which is known as Jabka. <laughs> Another concept of rhythm that I really enjoyed was, was termed polyrhythm. It is when you align two rhythms that necessarily have different number of beats, but still align over the same first note. And to this, uh, to illustrate this, I would like to ask for you, ask for the audience's help and for all of y'all to try and work with me. So first, I will I would like to kind of divide y'all into two bits. So those sitting to the, my right of the camera and to the left of the camera. So I will play something on this drum, and I would like uh, each of Tap it or tap it on your knee or snap it, whichever you would like. And what I'll play on this song, I'd like all of y'all sitting to this side of the camera to try and do. Something personally that really intrigued me was a three and four beat of polyrhythm, which sounds really interesting actually. So, because a, a, a three two polyrhythm, as we just played, is a bit simpler to follow, but a three four polyrhythm, when you think of it and try to imagine it in your head, it can actually be quite tricky. So, I'll just play that for you all now. My right hand is counting three, and my left hand is counting four. 
Uh, but the yet they still line up at the exact same beat. So I'll do it. I'll count out as my hands are playing. One, two, three. One. Sounds like they're not actually in time, but if I if I was able to mute one hand, like stop playing, you would actually hear that it's fine, per that it's actually perfectly in time. My musical journey has been about me being able to express myself and try and convey stories through this, this art form. It's been about me being, trying to convey emotions and past memory. So I'd like to leave y'all with uh, a solo that the so, a solo that I learned. And before this, I'd like to ask each and every one of you to kind of consider the emotional aspects of the rhythm in a song that you might hear. Most of the time, we all focus on the melodies, but there's a lot to be there's a lot to be seen and discovered even with the rhythm aspects. Um, and now I'll leave you with the, uh, with the final solo.